Uh, so my name is Brad Landry. I'm a PGY4 uh, resident in PM&R at Mayo Clinic. And uh, I'm here at APM&R 2012 presenting our poster on constraint-induced movement therapy in children with hemiparesis uh, following hemispherectomy. So we did a case series of four children, uh, all of which had hemispherectomies uh, between uh, four and eight, 18 years after surgery. Uh, they then underwent uh, constraint-induced movement therapy uh, during their initial inpatient uh, rehabilitation stay. Uh, some of this continued afterwards once they were discharged, um, but they uh, continued with about a three-week uh, series of CIMT. Uh, our findings were that uh, three out of the four uh, kids that we had uh, did excellent with their constraint-induced movement therapy in regaining function and mobility uh, with ambulation and upper extremity function. Uh, there was one that did not do well, unfortunately, uh, but they did uh, not uh, continue with the therapy, uh, both inpatient or outpatient, uh, due to the parents' wish that it was too difficult uh, for them to continue with. So uh, constraint-induced movement therapy has been used a lot in adult populations following stroke, but not as much in the uh, pediatric or adolescent population. Uh, the findings in this case series uh, really promote uh, moving forward with further research looking at uh, constraint-induced movement therapy in children uh, following um, either hemispherectomy or, or other surgeries or uh, pathology that may lead to uh, hemiparesis. Really to decide what uh, most beneficial methods, appropriate, um, uh, what appropriate candidates would be uh, for, uh, for constraint-induced movement therapy.